A reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. and my salvation. God alone is my rock and my salvation. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall never be shaken. God in God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O oh people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. God alone is my rock and my salvation. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion, in robbery take no empty pride. The wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. God alone is my rock and my salvation. So, who wants to join me up here today? A couple of brave souls. All right, we're going to act this out. Follow me. We're in a parade. You ready? <laughs> what are we doing? We're turning the other way, right? This is an enactment of repentance. What? Did you
Did you know that to repent means to turn the other way? No. It is. And it happened three times in the scriptures we just heard from Jonah. The very first line we heard was, where is it? Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. What did Jonah do the first time God told him to do something? He said, no, I won't go there. That's what he said. Yes, and the second time he repented. He turned the other way and he did go to Nineveh. So then the second people that repented are the people of Nineveh who said, oh my goodness, God is going to overthrow us. We better turn around and do something else. And then who's the third person that repented? Did you hear? <laughs> and when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind. God repented. God turned the other way. Yeah. How about that? Turns out all kinds of people are turning the other way. What? Yes. How Rep can God change his mind? Yeah, how can God change his mind? Well, I guess God can do that. <laughs> That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So repentance is really kind of an interesting thing because it really does mean we decide we're going to go another way. Now, of course, hopefully it means that we decide to go a good way, not a bad way, right? Like we're going in a very good way and we said, no, oh, I don't think I'll do it anymore. I think I'll do something bad. That would probably not be the definition of repentance, right? So, today, we're going to think about that. And you're going to hear that word once again in the gospel reading, okay? So listen close, listen close, all right? Thanks for coming up today. All right, please rise for the gospel. is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Ah, hallelujah, ah, hallelujah, ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for this good day. A day when we again celebrate the epiphanies that you give us. The gifts, the glimpses of your reign begun amongst us. That give us hope and give us joy. We pray that today, through your word and sacrament, through meeting with your people, we might once again receive glimpses of your reign come among us and take joy in that and be agents of joy and hope in this world. In Christ's name, amen. Dearly beloved of God, how many situations can you think of where you respond immediately? I mean, 
right away. If you're like me, it's not the routine requests that get immediate responses. Glenn, would you take out the garbage? Not so much immediate response. Oh, nuts, I forgot, yeah. Glenn, would you call your mom and remind her that we're going to be late for the family reunion? Oh, I forgot. Respond immediately? Probably not. But there are situations that would garner my immediate attention. Glenn, I think my water just broke. The baby's coming. That would get my immediate attention. Or how about this one? Fire! Right? There are some situations which get our immediate attention. Indeed, if we didn't respond immediately, people would wonder about us. They would wonder. Well, I don't know if you noticed it, but in our gospel reading for today, there were two instances of the use of the word immediately. Listen again. Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Jesus immediately called them and immediately they followed him. Isn't that amazing? It strikes me that this would only be true if these men had just been made aware of something that was either incredibly tragic or incredibly wonderful. Or maybe it was both. What precedes this call, this immediate response, is one short sentence spoken by Jesus. He says this, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. That's it. And believe it or not, this is what motivated their immediate attention. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. One writer has called this the announcement of a cosmic catastrophe. Jesus has just announced that Almighty God, the maker of all things, has entered into human experience. And God's reign of justice and love and peace has begun. And the only appropriate response to this announcement is to repent and immediately follow in the way of God. Now, as I pointed out in the children's moment, that's what we hear in the story from the prophet Jonah. Jonah declares to these people in Nineveh, this huge, idolatrous city, 40 days more and Nineveh will be overthrown. He announces a catastrophe. And what happens? Immediately they all repent. They declare a fast. They put on the garb of grief, sackcloth. And the king announces that not only all people, but all animals, get that, shall Repent. It just strikes me that there are goats and sheep and oxen in sackcloth in Nineveh. Quite a scene. But he announces that all will turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. They repent immediately. Amazing. 
So I read about that. I thought of what recently happened in Hawaii. I'm sure you're aware of this. Inexplicably, inexplicably, an employee of the emergency management system pressed the wrong button. How can you press the wrong button? And declared a nuclear attack was imminent. Oh my goodness. That incoming missiles were on their way and there was, this was not a drill. Perhaps you saw, as I did, pictures of people lowering their children into manholes and people abandoning their cars on the highways and people running helter-skelter looking for a place of safety. And in 38 minutes it took for the emergency management system of Hawaii to correct this announcement. But in this 38 minutes, all had panicked. Why? Because when the announcement came of a catastrophe, they responded immediately. I dare say there weren't too many people in Hawaii who heard the radio and said, huh, nuclear attack, I guess I'll just have another cup of coffee. Right? Well, I'm not suggesting that somehow the appropriate response to the announcement by Jesus that the kingdom of God has come near is to go into a total meltdown. No. We are called to something much more grand than that. We are called to a new way of life, a new way of living. For this reason, that the announcement that the kingdom of God has come near is both the worst possible news to us and the best possible news to us. Yes, it is both. It is the worst news possible because this announcement is the announcement that our little kingdom and our puny power and our plans to gather all things to ourselves are now over. The announcement that God's reign has begun is the announcement that our time in the throne is done. And for those of us who love control, this is difficult. This is difficult. God is announcing that our plans to gather everything into our bank account has now been overthrown by God's plan to share the abundance of the world with all in need. God's announcement that the kingdom has come near is the announcement that our plan to exclude some people from the blessings of God based on our prejudices and our fears has now been overthrown by God's plan to embrace all and to share the blessings of the whole world with the whole world. God's announcement puts to rest any notions that we have that the limits that God places on us as mortals are somehow not ours. It exposes these ideas as illusions and makes us aware once again that we are persons made in God's image who desperately need to be connected deeply to the one who fashioned us. God's reign has begun. That's what Jesus says. And that means our reign has ended. And this is the hard truth of Jesus' announcement. And the only appropriate response to this announcement is to repent and to believe the good news and follow in the ways of God. But as I say, this announcement is also the best possible news. For it is also the announcement that new life is possible. Indeed, the abundant life is possible. For God makes all things new. God makes all things new. I have seen this with a new friend of mine who lives presently 
at the adult detention center at the Olmstead County Jail. He comes to my weekly Bible study there. He told me that once upon a time, he thought all this religious stuff was just bunk. No value, nothing to be taken seriously. But somehow, in the last weeks, he has had an epiphany. He has heard the announcement that God's reign has begun. And it has become good news to him. He has had serious addictions his entire adult life. And he has heard now of one whose power is even greater than the power of the drugs that he has been enslaved to. This is good news. His habits of stealing and lying and hurting all those who have tried to love him, he now understands as wicked and foolish and self-destructive. And repentance has begun for him. And in that repentance, he has found a freedom and a forgiveness that he has previously not known. God's reign in his life has begun. St. John calls this being born anew. And so it is. When we hear the announcement of the good news that God's reign has come near, the time is fulfilled, and we believe this good news, and we give ourselves into the way of truth, new life begins. The life that God promises us we are born again. We are made new. We are becoming citizens of this new kingdom. And all the riches of this kingdom become ours. This is what God longs for. That when we hear this announcement that God's reign has begun, that we might embrace it, we might leave behind those things that separate us from God, that destroy us and others, that we might follow in the way of Christ and do it immediately. And so, my friends, today the call comes to you. The announcement comes to you. The kingdom of God has come near. The time is fulfilled. Repent and believe the good news for a life that you cannot even imagine awaits you. Amen.